Hey everyone, welcome back to Pop Ball's Workshop. Well, 3D printing has become something that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy. But one of the problems that you have is how do you store the filament? Because the biggest problem with the filament is humidity. And it will destroy that filament and it will become useless. So how do you properly store it? Today I want to get into that and show you my method for being able to properly store the filament between the different prints. In my room, where I do all my 3D printing, I have a bookshelf that I'm storing all of the filament. And you notice, you really can't tell the difference between a brand new roll and a roll that I've been using. That's because all of them are stored the same way. Now I've seen and heard and watched a lot of videos about how to be able to store this different filament. But I really don't like them. Being able to put them in a storage box with a little dehumidifier just doesn't seem to work. And I just can't believe that it's actually sealing and protecting that filament. The best solution that I've come up with is using what you probably have in your kitchen already. And that is a food saver type of uh, system that will actually vacuum form this and take all the air back out of it. Now, I always put in that silica package in there to be able to help pull out any of that last bit of moisture. But being able to use this system eliminates all the air or the majority of the air out of this, keeping that humidity out, and that little silica package will do the job for the rest of it. Then, when it's time to do the next print, all you have to do is take the scissors, cut the top of it off, and your filament is just as good as the day it was when you first opened that vacuum sealed package. Here's how I do it. I have a couple of rolls of the filament right here that I need to be able to vacuum seal. Now to be able to do this, and this is not a sponsored video, this is a vacuum seal machine or a food saver that we have been using in our kitchen. And the first thing that I need to do is cut this to length. And I want to make sure that it's oversized. The reason being, I want to be able to use this several different times so I'm not wasting the material. So the first step is just cut it to length. And you notice this is rather long and that's okay because as I use the filament from one job to the next, I'll be able to cut it, reseal it, and keep using it. So the first step of this whole process is just being able to put it into the machine and I want to seal one end. Now this is a real easy process. All you have to do is just slip this plastic in there, close the lid on it, making sure that it's all aligned, and then this one has a button that says seal only. And that's what we're doing here, just getting one end taken care of. And it only takes just a few seconds for it to seal it, and it literally melts that plastic and will form an airtight seal. Now I'll let this sit for just a moment, so it in essence cools a little bit and then I'll take it out. I want to get a close up now of exactly what I'm doing with this particular machine as I seal the end of the second bag. Just close the lid after it's aligned, hit the seal and it doesn't get much easier than that and allow the machine to do the job. Once this is sealed, the light will turn off and you can open up the lid. Now I have a container that I can have one open end and I can slide the filament right inside. Now these are basically gallon size type bags that this filament will fit into and of course you can cut it any length that you want it and I like to cut it just a little bit long. Once I have that inside, I always put the silica package in as well. And at this point, you're just going to repeat the process that we did on the other end of the package. We're going to heat seal this end of the package and of course we're going to take out all of the air. This is where we need to do the vacuum seal. So you need to again line it correctly in a machine that you have. And once that's done, then we'll be able to close the lid and hit the button that says vacuum and seal. And you notice this bag is quite a bit long. So this now with the vacuum and seal button selected is going to pull out all of the air out of this package and then seal it. And you can see this actually happen right in front of you, sucking that air out of the package. 
And to me, this is the absolute best way to be able to store your filament because quite frankly, you're doing exactly what the manufacturer did at the very beginning when they made this filament. So now, if you look at this package that is completely sealed, and you can see how all of that air has been pulled out of it, and it has vacuum sealed the filament inside, eliminating the majority of the air, and that silica package is right down inside. For this second package, I want to be able to get a different angle on the camera so that you can actually see how much longer this package is than actually what is really required. And again, the reason that I'm doing this is so I'm not wasting a lot of bag. Now you might say, well, you're wasting the bag because you're cutting that so long. But the idea behind this is I can cut off the end of this, pull the filament out, run the job, slip it right back into the same bag, reseal it, and I'm going to get multiple uses out of this bag until it becomes too short so that the roll of filament won't fit inside of this uh, package. And then from there, yes, I'll have to create a new package to be able to store the filament in. So for me, to be able to get this back to, in essence, the same as what came with the, from the manufacturer, is the absolute best way to store the filament. Now, if you think you have a better method that is going to be less expensive or better, or to be able to protect the filament better than this solution, please leave me a comment down in the uh, comment section below so that we can carry on this conversation so that all of us can grow and find the absolute best way to be able to store the filament. Because filament, although it's not extremely expensive, it can get a little bit costly if you lose it and you have to discard filament that has become bad and you can't print with it. Not to mention all the time that you're gonna lose doing a bad print. So I would love to have your comments and feedback on what you think of this method and what method that you use in your shop to store the filament. Because quite frankly, so far, for when I have tried several different methods and they were not as successful as I had hoped. This method seems to be the absolute best so far and I would love to be able to hear from you and let you let me know what you think. Now the best thing about this is when I'm storing it on the shelf, let's say I have a problem and one of those seals breaks, I'll know it immediately because it's not going to be pulled down tight against the filament. After I finish printing, I always remove the spool of the filament from the um, printer itself so that I can store it. And I'll just clip it off if I don't have time to unload it immediately. But once this is done and I store the filament away, then I want to come back and remove this last little bit from the printer itself. And to do that, I'm going to come right over here and hit prepare. I'm going to hit the extruder button right here. And then I'm going to select the unload. And I'm going to hit confirm. Now the temperature right now is not hot enough, so it's going to take a couple of minutes for this to heat up. And then we're going to unload this last little bit of the filament from the print head itself. Now that this is up to temperature, I'm going to hit unload one more time, and I'm going to be able to remove this last little bit of filament from the uh, print head itself. I'll move this and just lift straight up. And you should see a long string of the filament, and that's what you want. If you get that, that will be properly removed, and this print head will be ready for the next time you want to print an item. I'm sure that you've noticed when you buy that brand new roll of filament, it comes vacuum sealed. So what better way to be able to store your own filament than to vacuum seal it again? And like I said, you probably have this in your kitchen already. All you got to do, get the wife's permission and use that food saver to be able to vacuum seal your filament again and get it back as if it was brand new. 
Now, I know this is a very short video today, but it's one that I think is critically important for anybody doing the 3D printing, especially starting out. How do you protect that filament so that it does not go bad? So I hope this little short video was very valuable to you and will help you keep your 3D printer working in its most efficient manner and protect that filament. And if you did like the video, by all means, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there below. And don't forget, hit the bell notification next to it so that you'll be reminded and notified of the different videos that I upload. So I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the upcoming videos. But for now, I'm going to say bye-bye.